This is the flight path of American Airlines Flight 77 from where it took off at Washington Dulles Airport to where it was hijacked, turned around, flew back towards uh, Washington and crashed into the Pentagon. Now, as you can see, towards the end of the flight path, there's this loop. And some people have said this loop is kind of suspicious because it looks, people think about flying in loops. Uh, and this is technically a, a circuit, not a loop. A loop would be vertical, but let's call it a loop for now because that's what more, most people call it. It flies in this descending circle here uh, so it can impact the Pentagon, which is over here. The reason the pilot did this is that at this point here, uh, presumably where he decides what he's going to actually fly into, where he sees the Pentagon down here, it's very difficult to fly down a plane like this at this steep of an angle. So there wasn't enough room for him to uh, nose down and go straight into the Pentagon from here. So what he did was a much more gradual, uh, quite shallow, ordinary turn to the right. And what he would have done is he would notice what his heading was here. It's basically due east. And he would have just uh, started a turn and just kept that constant rate turn, uh, knowing that when he's gone back around to facing east again, he would have be more or less back where he started. And it doesn't really change what he would have actually hit. If you look at where on the Pentagon he would have hit, from this position it's hitting over here, from down here it would hit you know, pretty much the same side, it doesn't really make any difference. He ends up hitting right here, and you can see the memorial here where the flight path is indicated where it hits the Pentagon. So what I'm going to do, try and do is duplicate this in uh, X-Plane. Uh, flying from back over here somewhere. Uh, this position here, where you can't actually really see anything. So I'm just going to fly from here east at about this height. Then when I get there, I'll make this turn and I will descend in and try and hit the Pentagon in approximately the same uh, manner that was done. So let's see what happens. All right, here I am flying east from that position. And I'm just going to basically try to maintain this altitude of around 8,000 feet until I get a bit closer. Uh, I see a freeway over the right. And I'm, what I'm going to do is try to follow that freeway in. So I think that freeway is going to go towards Washington, which is what I want. So. I'm just going to turn a little bit to the left here, follow the freeway. And in fact, I can see some tall buildings just right in the center of the screen. So I know I'm going roughly in the right direction. Let's increase my speed a little, increase the throttle, which will help maintain my altitude. Don't want to get too fast. If I get over around 350, it makes it difficult to make maneuvers. If I'm not flying in a perfectly straight line. All right, I've descended to about 7,000 feet. Okay, so I'm going to angle in towards these tall buildings. I'm not entirely sure where the Pentagon is in relation to these. You really can't see very much from up here from this distance. Of course, nothing to stop you to having some binoculars or something and looking ahead. And of course, there'd be more than one person in the, the cabin, which would be helpful. Actually, I'm not sure about that. I'll have to check that. So anyway, heading towards Washington. Can we see the Pentagon? Can we see the, any of the buildings of Washington? I can't see anything yet. Oh, I see the Pentagon. I'm going to turn towards the Pentagon. All right, so now what I'm going to do is assume I am too high. I'm going to reduce the throttle down to zero. See, there's the Pentagon straight ahead there. Now, what I'm going to do is do a fixed rate turn of uh, a two minute turn. Oops. 
So I get the turn indicator, which is just above me here, on the second pip. Set the throttle to zero, and I'm just going to turn until I'm facing east again. So I'm turning around now, let's see, 140 degrees. I am descending. Throttle's at zero, so uh, I'm just going to be sinking through the air using my forward velocity and my height to maintain uh, speed. See, dropping down 5,300 feet, 5,200 feet. And I want to try to keep my turn rate constant, which means I'll go in a circle. It's not very hard, you know, I just turn the, uh, the yoke to the right and look at my turn rate indicator. Make sure it's on the second mark. Oh, there we go, second mark. And just keep doing that. And it's quite a slow procedure. Yeah, the hijacker may well have turned a bit faster than this, but I'm just going to do this because this is what you would be trained to do. You don't want to go too fast. You don't want to mess things up. It's not going to make much difference if you do a, a two minute turn or a one minute turn. See, I'm going around to the freeway again. I'm at 240 degrees, so that's kind of facing west now. It's turning around towards the north. At 270 degrees. Oh, turning a bit too fast there. I don't want the wings to fall off the plane. Okay, 220 degrees. My problem uh, when flying was always checking everything. You're supposed to check all the instruments in sequence to make sure everything's there. So you can check the heading indicator, the altitude, the turn rate indicator, the vertical speed indicator, your uh, your speed indicator. All right, what am I at now? 330 degrees. So I'm coming around towards north, so I'm coming back round towards... Let me make sure I'm going fast enough, otherwise I'll end up too far to the north. Coming around to facing north, so soon I will be able to see uh, the Pentagon again. I'll get a visual on it. And you see, I've dropped down. And I think I can stick the nose down a bit here because I'm losing airspeed. Another of my problems when flying. Try to get back to uh, 300 or something. When you get down to the thousand feet level, that means yeah, pretty much you're close to the ground. Okay, so coming back around to the east, and we see all the buildings again. And I have to start. I remember where the Pentagon was, just at uh, the end of this freeway. So I'm going to straighten out. Aim towards the Pentagon. Getting some warnings now. All right. You can see the Washington Monument just to the left of center there. I'm going to increase my throttle. I don't want to drop too much speed. Just push the nose down because increasing the airspeed tends to make the nose want to come up. I'm going very fast now, so I need to avoid making any sudden movements. But I also want to get down low enough, so I hit it. I'm getting an overspeed indicator. Oh, apparently I had the landing gear down. Don't know how that happened. I'm probably going to break the plane up if I keep this up. Okay, going a little high. And bam. All right, so let me toggle the recording uh, mode. I'm back out again. Uh, let's see. Yeah, the one problem with uh, X Plane is it keeps the smoke, which is very annoying. Um, let me do a different view here and play this at uh, full speed. Let's back out a little. 
back out a bit and then fly back in again. The smoke should have cleared. You can see the smoking here because the engine has exceeded its structural limits, which is showing there's some damage. Uh, because I'm flying in a straight line, I didn't actually lose control of the plane. Okay, so there it is. Not actually that hard. Coming in at a steeper angle here, but uh, it wouldn't uh, be that hard to come in at a, a less steep angle. And shift to an interior view here. And I was going at 413 knots, uh, which isn't too far off what the actual plane was doing. I think it was 400 and something. And finally, something we can do is have a look at the map of the route, uh, which was recorded in X-Plane. And here's the Potomac here. Here is my flight in and here is the turn I made. You can see I did a little bit of a tighter turn. It wasn't quite a perfect circle, but it's more or less the same scale as the actual uh, Flight 77 uh, turning path. And the result was uh, more or less the same. So here's the actual flight path in Google Earth, and here's my flight path overlaid to scale. You can see the more or less the same type of thing, a standard two minute uh, right descending turn. Not difficult at all.